you holding on any longer, Arthur. Welcome to the show. We've finally got there, and my birds are tweeting away, <coughs> so they're enjoying the show already. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andy. It's okay You're most speak welcome. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say thanks to all the supporters, um, especially one chap. He knows who he is. Um, we we won't say his name over the air, but he's had many problems in Belfast with the establishment, the courts. Uh, he lost his mum a little while back. He's a good man, and thanks to him for bringing us back together again after you know a, a few weeks of misunderstandings, um, you know, within people and Facebook and all that rubbish. Yeah, Arthur, do go ahead. Do, do a, a basic overview of your dad's story and, and, and everything else. Great, Andy. Thank you very much, and uh, hello to all your listeners. Now, I would like about my father, Arthur Joseph Rafferty, who was murdered in 1974 by... Sinn Féin ARA, who colluded with the RUC PSNA on the British state. And Sinn Féin ARA and former Freddy Scapatici, a.k.a. Steak Knife. Now, what follows is what has happened over the 43 years of my fight for justice. First of all, I would like to say, when I decided that these solicitors and lawyers were doing nothing about my father's case, and I could do the case myself. I tried to, to, to gather up all the paper chase from these people after all the years that they had his case, and to my amazement, not one of them had any documents concerning my father. The only letter I got from my last solicitor was from that Attorney General, John Largan. Now, I, myself, have hundreds of letters from people I have wrote to about my father's case. Yet, these legal people had his case for 43 years, and all I got was one letter. It is as I, it is as I thought. They were told by the powers to, that be here in Northern Ireland to do nothing about my father's case, and it lay as a cold case on shelves for 43 years, gathering dust, as, it, as if my father never existed and that no such person was ever murdered. Of course, that is what they want to think. Then someone, they, uh, someone should tell me who my father is and where he went to. Now, we're getting down to the facts now. Once again, that scum running our legal and court systems here in Northern Ireland have proved me right. They are, without doubt, the most corrupt, discredited scum on the face of the earth. Just look at the last two stories that I have put Arthur off the YouTube. I think they speak volumes about the, the morality of those so-called scum who run our legal system and also our court services, especially that sham of a family court in Lagonside Court. Uh, or should I call it a kangaroo court, a court run behind closed doors. No members of the public are allowed in, not even members of those who are to attend the court. The only ones who are allowed in to the court are lawyers, solicitors, and, of course, that corrupt social services. Now, you don't have to be Einstein to work that one out. Uh, the corrupt dealings are going on behind closed doors on innocent members of the public, especially young children getting taken from their parents and tossed into foster homes and other state homes, where many innocent children have been abused by pedophiles, by court services, especially judges and those social services. Innocent children who know no better and who depend on services to look after them and protect them and keep them safe. Now, my office, the Arthur Rafferty Foundation, has received many complaints from parents who have made serious charges about that court and those in charge of it, especially two judges who I have in mind, and we are looking into their past history 
their names will be coming out very shortly. Now, getting back to that corrupt legal system, my father, Arthur Joseph Rafferty, brutally murdered by Sinn Féin ARA police informer Freddy Scapatici in 1974. With the full cooperation of that corrupt paramilitary group calling themselves a police force. Now, the RUC, PSNI have colluded with Sinn Féin ARA leadership so that my father's case will never reach the courts. Also involved in this sham are members of the legal services, such as the Attorney General's Office of John Larkin, who has refused me an inquest on my father's murder. His office is pro Sinn Féin ARA. The other office is that of Barry McCroy of the PPS office. That is the Public Prosecution Office, who is also pro Sinn Féin ARA. Both these two offices have refused, refused to be of any assistance to me in my father's murder, as both are heavily, heavily involved with Sinn Féin ARA. And the scum who murdered my father, Scapatici, also a top Sinn Féin ARA man. And this corrupt legal system here in Northern Ireland is protecting them all. Now, I have waited for 43 years for justice for my father, and no one, including those two scum from the legal services, will stand in my way, not on my watch. Still, with legal system, Scabatici was allowed to appear in court in 2004, charged with perjury. He swore on oath that his code name was not steak knife, which was a total lie on the British state and the corrupt courts here dropped all charges. And Scapatici and his minders from the MI5, MI6 walked free from court after committing perjury. So I can advise the public in Northern Ireland, if you need to commit perjury to further your case, do so. According to these legal people, it is legal to do it and face no charges. For if they can't do it, so also can the ordinary public in Northern Ireland do it, as there cannot be one law for them and another law for us, the public, as perjury is perjury, no matter who committed it, and that is a five-year jail sentence in any decent court, but not here in Belfast. At long last, after many years of trying to get an inquest into the brutal murder of my unarmed father, Arthur Joseph Rafferty, is 56 years old and a father of eight children. The state consisting of the RUC, PSNI, Sinn Féin ARA and the British Security Forces shot my father to death, an unarmed man. Uh, the state has refused me to get an inquest into my father's murder. The present Attorney General, John Lorgan, I've sent him dozens of letters. He never answers any of them. He has also refused to answer my solicitor's call for an inquest. Now, after 43 years, he has finally answered my request at long last. I received a letter from my solicitor stating that he, John Largan, John Largan the Attorney General, wants me to give him the names of my informers, including the name of an ex-RUC Special Branch Officer who helped me with details about my father's murder and what happened to all the fatal evidence that was stolen from a fortified police station in York Road in Belfast, evidence that was gathered at my father's scene of the murder and was kept in the police station for safekeeping under lock and key. Now, no one was ever charged with the theft. I have asked many times to explain how all the evidence can go missing from a fortified RUC station that is manned for 24-7, but have got no response. One of my informants was a top ARA man called Benton Craig Cuse, rest in peace, who gave me a detailed report about those who murdered my father, all were Sinn Féin ARA informers working for the RUC PSNI Special Branch. The man who murdered my father was also an agent for the FRU, that's F-R-U, that is Forces Research Unit of the British Army, whose job 
was to recruit informers and pay them to murder innocent members of the public. The same goes for the RUC, PSNI and the Special Branch. They employed hundreds of members of Sinn Féin ARA, UDA, UFF and UVF all to act as informers and gave them a free hand to murder at will and that they would never stand trial for their murders. And they were all paid out of the public purse. This coming from a so-called police force whose job was to uphold law and order, not to employ armed terrorists to murder innocent members of the public. And these terrorists were armed by the RUC PSNA and were well paid. And for that, Attorney General John Largan, who wanted me to give him the names of those brave people who came forward to help me in the late 70s and 80s, when people were getting murdered day and night, just to give me evidence about those who murdered my father. I say to John Largan, and I hope he is listening, are you living in the real world? These people put their lives, and also their families' lives, at this to talk to me, and I will not, not divulge their names to anyone. I respect the privacy of these brave people. If you want uh, to know who murdered my father, go to your friends in Sinn Féin ARA. You and Barra McCrory have plenty of them. Or to your friends in RUC PSNA who have known who murdered my father since 1974. It was there. Sinn Féin area and former Scapatiche, and they have withheld that fatal evidence since 1974, right up until the present day in 2017. Now, and their Sinn Féin area and former is in London, under military protection, and is still getting paid out of the public purse for services rendered to the British state. Uh, it would not surprise me if Scapatiche was honoured like those chief constables from Northern Ireland who, over the past 40 years, have murdered many Catholics and were needed by that Queen for their dirty work. And also those Lord Chief Justices in the legal system who have made life very hard for ordinary Irish men and women and, of course, children uh, when they have to attend in those corrupt courts run by those corrupt judges behind closed doors. But sure, their award will be to join those corrupt chief constables and receive their 30 pieces of silver from that warmonger of a queen and be called lords, sirs and ladies. Shame on you all. Now, my plan is to take these faceless, nameless scum to court for murdering my father, but, but, but that bond of loyalist thugs calling themselves the RUC, PSNA, Special Bunch, have colluded with the legal system and the court system to block me from getting legal aid to take my case to court. While 14 Sinn Féin ARA terrorists calling themselves the hooded men have appeared in court not once but three times. These terrorists have all got legal aid to fight their cases, but of course the Attorney General John Larkin and Barry McCrory of the PPS office would make sure that their comrades and Sinn Féin ARA would get legal aid. Also, two Sinn Féin ARA men who abused and ripped Marie Cagle also appeared in court, and of course, they got legal aid also. And their comrade, Barry McCrory, threw their case out of court for lack of evidence. Now, only, only in the corrupt court system here in Northern Ireland could that happen. The whole legal system here in Northern Ireland needs a complete overhaul. It has to be the most corrupt system in the whole world. The, these solicitors and lawyers and judges are ripping the public off, claiming false amounts of legal aid for doing nothing, and the corruption runs right to the very top of the system. But they are not on their own. Just look at those so-called politicians in Stormont, where hundreds of thousands of pounds were stolen from the public purse. These people were named and shamed by the Spotlight Show on BBC programme Live. And not one had the decency to own up, own up to the fraud. No one 
was ever questioned or charged. Now we have the heating scandal that brought Stormont down, costing the taxpayer millions of pounds, and still those people at Stormont are walking about as if nothing had happened. These people have no shame, no morality, no conscience, and yet they are standing again for elections next week to Stormont. How could any decent, honest person vote for them? You would have to be brain dead to give them your vote. That RUC PSNA is supposed to be a police force, have not arrested anyone about those crimes. If those crimes were committed by ordinary members of the public, those same police would have arrested hundreds and brought them before the corrupt courts charged with fraud. Fraud is fraud no matter who committed it. Oh, I forgot. The RUC PSNA don't want to offend those thieving scum friends of theirs in Stormont. Now, just to finish, let me tell you, let me tell those low-life scum from the RUC PSNA who call themselves a police force, the legal system, the court services, the leaders of Sinn Féin ARA, and of course the British state, if they think that by colluding together that they can't force me to walk away and not get justice for my father, they are living in cloud cuckoo land. I am in this fight for the long haul, and I will get justice for my father. I will get, I will uh, let your, I will get your jewel in the crown, Freddie Scapatice, a.k.a. Stick Knight, to stand trial for the mocking of my father. If not in these corrupt courts, then I turn. I turn to plan B. Okay, Andy? Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what what plan B is after, um, you know, later well, on, maybe. Pl- well, plan B, you I have I've planned this for, yes, it's okay. Yeah, carry on. Plan B, as I see it, Andy. These corrupt people here are going to do absolutely nothing to Stignate. He is their jewel in the crown, as they called him, and they have allowed him to kill over 100 people himself, well over 100, and had done nothing about it. But the worst part about it, they paid him out of the taxpayers' money. Now, my plan B is I have uh, had people working for me a long time, and I know exactly where this clown is. He's under military protection by a guard, all the time, MI5. And if need be, I personally will go to that door and kick that door in. Because I've had enough of these people here. I've asked for help, and they have turned it down time and time again. Because apparently, this man has got the okay to do whatever he wants. And in this day and age, that doesn't happen. If that's okay for him to do that, it's okay for me to do that. That's plan B. I'll be over in London. I'll face uh, Betty Scapatice. After all, he couldn't face my father. He shot my father five times in the back. Let, him, let me see if they can do that with me. And let me see if his manners are big enough to stop me. Thank you, Andy.